Hey guys, Level Cap here. Today we're going to be doing a weapon review for the Perino Machine Gun Model 1908 from Battlefield 1. This is a weapon that is exclusive to the In the Name of the Tsar DLC. It's one of two support weapons that was released in this DLC. And it's certainly an interesting weapon, but I saved it for last to review because it's got some features that may make it less attractive to the average user. Now, first of all, the gun doesn't always look this cool. I happen to get one of the cool legendary skins for it that turns it into sort of a Fabergé egg variant of the actual weapon. One really cool thing about this weapon that I think most people will agree is that the reload on it is pretty darn cool. It's basically just got a box of ammunition clips next to the weapon, and you can basically just throw in new clips whenever you're running low on ammo. It prevents you from having to do a extremely lengthy reload if you only need to put a few more rounds into the weapon. Also, if you're paying attention to the details of the reload animation, it won't top off the weapon unless you hit the reload button a second time. This gives you a very fast reload mechanic as you literally are just tossing clips into the box magazine, which is, it's really cool. I like the concept behind this gun. Now the practicality of this weapon as a runaround gun is like completely implausible. I think the original design of this actually weighed something like 60 pounds and then in 1910 they got the weight down to like maybe 30 something pounds. Uh, still making it an incredibly heavy weapon to lug into combat, not to mention you have loose ammo in a box next to the gun. I think this was basically just primarily a bipodded weapon or a weapon that would rest on the very edge of a trench. I doubt you would have ever seen anybody lugging this one into combat and shooting it from the hip. But then again, that's kind of how Battlefield games treat machine guns. Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 did the same thing with some of the HMGs. Now, when this weapon is topped off with ammo, it can hold an impressive 120 rounds, more than enough to deal with multiple enemies. The thing that's gonna kinda catch you up here or uh, keep you from just mowing through droves and droves of baddies is the incredibly slow rate of fire of 450 rounds per minute. This actually makes the Perino one of the slowest firing machine guns out there, and it's actually tied for one of the lowest damage per second machine guns in the game. Low DPS is probably one of the biggest things to hold a weapon back from really excelling on the battlefield in just about any battlefield game. And if you've watched my videos for a while, you'll know it's probably one of the biggest things to hurt a weapon's performance. If you just can't out damage your opponent with time to kill, you just aren't gonna be able to win certain firefights. If it's a stand-up firefight and your opponent has a weapon that shoots faster and does more damage than you, well, you're probably going to lose if you're both equally skilled. In addition to that, in very hectic firefights where you might need to peek out quickly, get one kill, and duck back behind cover, well, you have to expose yourself for quite a while with the Perino because of its incredibly slow time to kill, giving multiple opponents plenty of time to take shots on you. And I found that to be one of the bigger grievances with this weapon when combat got really intense and the enemy team was actually good or had the upper hand. This was not a useful weapon for peeking out quickly and getting a kill or two when it counted. There's plenty of other weapons that would have been perfectly capable of that. The Perino is not one of them. Now, of course, there's many other stats that can determine whether or not a weapon is effective. Not all slow time to kill weapons are bad if they have the accuracy uh, or ranged effectiveness to make up for their rate of fire, then they can actually be fairly effective weapons. A good example of this is the M1909 Benet Mercy, which is also a machine gun in this game with the exact same rate of fire and the exact same time to kill. I actually like the M1909 quite a bit. It's accurate, it's got good optics for shooting at range, um, and I find it very, very effective. The downside of it compared to this weapon is that it's only got a 30 round magazine, so it performs a bit more like an assault rifle, and you can usually only get through one or two enemies before you need to reload the weapon, but it makes up for it considerably with better accuracy, recoil, and better hip fire, making it much more effective at medium and longer ranges. The Perino sadly suffers from mediocre accuracy at medium and longer ranges. 
Once the bipod is deployed, of course, this gets much better and much more effective. But again, uh, if you've watched my videos for any period of time, you'll know that I'm not a huge fan of bipods in Battlefield games. I think Battlefield 1 has handled them better than just about any previous Battlefield game in that you can quickly deploy them on ledges and maintain maneuverability pretty quickly when you're trying to run away from them. But beyond uh, having good window cells and ledges to shoot from, it can be very difficult to take advantage of those bipods. So I try not to review machine guns or weapons in general based on their bipoded performance. I make a note that they have bipods and they can take advantage of them should you find yourself in a situation in which you want to use it. But for the most part, I think run and gun gameplay should be the way that most weapons are being reviewed. Even if you're playing more defensively, it's going to be a bit more run and gun. You're not going to want to just post up with a bipod in one window and mow people down. You're going to get sniped pretty easily. You got to keep moving and picking new defensive locations. Now, the other thing that the Perino suffers from compared to the M1909 is also its damage drop off. The M1909 actually extends up to 19 damage at further ranges, where the Perino drops down to 15 damage. This is going to, again, lessen your time to kill at the further ranges. And really, that's the only option that the Perino has to be extremely effective. You're going to need medium to long range to even try and squeak a kill in with this weapon. I'm showing clips here of me getting kills in close range, but most of that's me just outplaying my opponents. Almost all of them have weapons that can outdamage me easily. In fact, just about any gun in the game can out damage this weapon in close quarters. So if it's an equal fight or an equal skill matchup, I'm going to lose. That's just how that equation plays out both on paper and in practice as I played with this gun pretty extensively and lost plenty of times in which I ended up shooting before my opponent and they're just able to win through sheer time to kill. Now there are two variations of the Perino that perform a little bit different in combat. We have the Perino low weight and then the Perino defensive. Both are fairly easy to unlock. The low weight requires 40 kills with the MG15NA low weight and then 10 squad resupplies. This is no problem at all. If you like the MG15, then you can do it easily. The defensive requires 50 kills from the BAR Storm, a excellent weapon, very easy to do. And then 20 more kills with the M1912 pistol, which is exclusive to the support class. This might take a little bit longer depending on how effective you are with the support class, but both assignments are very easy and both variants of this weapon are very easy to unlock. Now the main differences between these two weapons is that the low weight version either has to use iron sights or anti-aircraft sights, um, and it recovers faster from recoil in between firing it, and it also has faster spread recovery once you start firing the weapon. The defensive version of this weapon has the option for red dot sights, which I think are superior to the AA or iron sights, and it has better first shot spread recovery, meaning that basically the defensive version is gonna give you more accurate shots for your first several shots from that weapon, uh, where the low weight version is gonna give you probably better accuracy for continued fire over long periods of time. Ultimately, I really feel like the differences between the two weapons are very minor, and really you should just pick whichever variant you like the sights for the best, whichever one you think you're more accurate with, because that's really gonna determine how effective you are with this weapon more more so than the spread recovery differences. Again, they're very minor. If you're accurate with your first few shots, then you'll probably prefer the defensive. I think I enjoyed the defensive a bit more because of the red dot sights just being a little bit more precise uh, and the need to really land every shot you possibly can with this weapon because of its slow rate of fire and extremely slow time to kill. You can't afford to miss too many shots and so having the red dot helped with that. Now again, this is a review before the next big weapons patch in which I think machine guns are going to see some of the most drastic changes to their stats overall, both in how weapon spread works and their base damage models. So it's certainly going to be worth revisiting these areas of the game. It could be a much more effective weapon after the next damage patch, but from what I've seen so far, it does seem like the other guns are still going to have a significant advantage over this one. So even if uh, uh, time to kill is increased, 
all around, it's still going to be one of the slower TTK weapons, and it's going to suffer from pretty much the exact same symptoms as it did pre-patch. Anyway, that's what I think. So we'll have to, again, wait and see until that patch comes around, but I still think it's going to be in the exact same order on the totem pole right at the bottom of that TTK list compared to the other weapons. So anyway, in its current state though, I really can't recommend the Perino machine gun. It's slow time to kill and not particularly accurate overall. You're welcome to try it out. It's worth unlocking, especially since we don't know what it's going to be like after the next weapons patch. As always guys, thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.